All right, mini mill upgrades and mods. First, uh, let me give you a rundown on the fruits of my labor. I will admit, this side's a bit off. Thousands high there. Thousands high there. Let me, uh, Switch utensils, prop you up over here on my electric rail, see how that works. Um, a thousand's off on the edge of the table. I'm not even gonna mess with it. Uh, that's well, that'd be half the distance to center, so it'd be five, ten thousand. Five ten thousandths off to center, and that would be divided by about nine inches away from the edge. So I mean, we're talking, you know, even with a fly cutter, the the amount is so minuscule that it's not going to make a damn bit of difference. I mean, I could aim for better, and maybe I will, but for now, uh, all I have to mill. At the moment is I have to make some uh, sorry guys I don't know where the hell you were pointed there I have to make some uh, vice uh, some soft jaws uh, probably out of nylon or acetate or whatever I got so Just unload any tension that might be in there. All right, well, I'm not going to put it exactly on zero, but it's at roughly zero. It's, uh, oh, that's screw it. All right, we're on zero. See, now it wants to sit down the other way. Anyway, there, it's on zero. Um, So that's over, I don't know, whatever we got there, um, four and a half, almost five inches. Now a previous video I discussed, unfortunately I didn't show the process, but I went into a pretty thorough discussion about uh, squaring your spindle to your column. Uh, that is a very important step before tramming. Uh, the theory is, well, I guess it's not a theory, but the fact is, if your spindle is not, or, yeah, if your spindle is not square with your column, you are going to, you know, as you mill, as you bring your z-axis up and down it's not traveling straight up and down it will be traveling at an angle one way or the other so uh it might not be a real big deal if you're taking off uh you know minuscule amount of an inch but if you're attempting to say ream a six inch hole uh you could easily cause some binding in your tool. Um, same thing if it's at an angle. Um, plus, if it's at an angle, either way, and you attempt to tram your table, uh, it's going to be a real pain in the butt because you're going to have to put that many more shims underneath your column, and you know it's still not going to. It's still going to travel at that angle, so. Uh, there is a little bit of flex still in my uh, in my column. It's well, I don't know, 
I mean, so about a thousandth of an inch, and that's under normal wear. Um, the nice thing is I can actually lock my Z-axis that I only moved um, 25 ten thousandths of an inch, or yeah, 25 ten thousandths. So, but yeah, there is a little bit of play. I will address that a little bit later. Um, some of what you're seeing here is actually the reamer is probably crooked. Okay, well, I'm not sure what's going on here because I just measured a minute ago and it read zero all the way down. Uh, maybe I had some uh, load or something bound up in there. Oh, I almost rammed it in there. Okay, so we're uh, 25 ten thousandths of an inch in the same four and a half, five inches. Uh, so I'd say that's uh pretty damn good for a mini mill um i guess you could say i need to check it again but since i ran a test before i turned on the camera and then i ran this test i'm trying to do all this kind of one-handed uh i'm just gonna have faith that uh i'm pretty damn close i'll check it again before i do any serious milling so that's the uh fruits of the labor that's after uh squaring up my my uh spindle with my column and then um, tramming my table the way I discussed I've actually got a shim under here now it's a uh, five thousandths of an inch shim uh, I still mean to do the rest of that video I think most of the video on on um, finishing the column by hand is in there but you know essentially it's just filing it down to get it to fit um, as square as possible without shimming it and it's a very very tedious task so now uh, the things added uh, obviously I put uh, some leather gibbs or leather gibbs leather weight covers on here uh, these are probably uh, I don't know I'd say a three to four ounce leather and I like these a lot better because they take up a lot less room you know when I advance my table all the way forward which I'm still not there um, you know there's still room for my lock nut which isn't currently in there and you know it's not all floppy and like those uh, big bulky way covers uh, the rear is cut quite a bit shorter than the front so that's uh, one upgrade Uh, another upgrade is this little thing. Not only does it hold my top weight or yeah, my top weight cover on at the moment, which is just another strip of leather. Uh, I'm thinking this one does have a tendency to bunch out a little bit when it comes down naturally. Uh, so what I was thinking was uh, I have some. Uh, let me set you down for just a second. I have some uh, aluminum. Um, tubing pipe. It's a stack of gold stuff down here. So I was thinking about just cutting a couple pieces of that, and uh, maybe I probably wouldn't even need. Yeah, I'd probably do two pieces. You know, like one right in here, and then one a little bit lower, and wrapping around. So when I bring it down, that'll actually ride against the back of my column. And it'll hold this, you know, back just a little bit. And then when it comes down in bunches, it's just going to bunch in two areas because I probably only need the one actually above my adjustment. So I might do that. I might not. Um, you know, this isn't a real big deal, especially if I'm using a vise because it'll get down in front of my vise. So, and this is actually going to be coming forward another inch. That's a story for another day. So my little setup here is actually part of a counterbalance system as opposed to 
the uh, air shock that was originally on here or a uh, torsion spring. Um, I really like this a lot better, the air shock. I would notice when I'd get down to the bottom of the Z-axis, it would get really, really tight. Um, that was uh, also part of the issue is the uh, ways were um, absolutely unacceptable, at least for my standards. Uh, a lot of people, mini mills, they might feel that they're uh, completely acceptable. I am attempting to make some reasonably precision stuff, so I want my mill to operate smooth and my ways to slide smooth. Um, so essentially, this piece under here, besides holding my gib, I have my a piece of all thread that comes up over top, and then it's actually screwed down here to uh, on that motor adjustment. And this motor can actually slide inside this little aluminum piece. And then obviously, I just have uh, whatever you want to call it, an eye bolt. Sorry, guys, it's midnight, twelve thirty. Um, I brought it up. These were uh, just brass pulleys. Uh, I got the you can get them down at the hardware store. I think they're like five bucks. I got the double set, five or six bucks, and then I just cut the housing off. Used the pulleys, just you know, some pieces of scrap metal I had around. Uh, and this whole it's kind of cool because this whole uh, counterbalance setup, you know, all the way down is put on without putting a single hole anywhere in my mill it's all bolted on there using um, current holes so i just got some aluminum tubing you know grooved it out set that in there the only reason the screws in there is to keep it from sliding back and forth to keep my alignment correct on my um, tension wire counterbalance wire um, I got two pulleys here because of what I did I had this whole setup on with this I didn't post that video but uh, I just had a piece of plate sitting on top of the my tabletop here and um, I had like three thousandths movement each way on my indicator with the column so as opposed to uh, well, I, I tightened it up real good. I, you know, I adjusted it originally because what happened is I had some holes back here. So this was a gib adjustment. The other side was a gib adjustment. And then there was a middle hole right there that was uh, kind of like a lock nut. Once I got my gibs adjusted, I could crank down on that and it would pull a, a downwards tension. So I'd have both an upwards and a downwards tension pushing on the back of my mill. So it wouldn't, in theory, it wouldn't allow it to flex. But, uh... The faulty part was the table because it was setting on that and I actually have a brace for my counterbalance system underneath here. I am going to find me a flashlight because we're going into the dark boys. So I actually had that rear uh, tie down gib. There's a hole there you all can see. And that actually came through here which is bolted to the wall and it's bolted to the table. And so that actually created a pull down that was something besides just on the wooden table. But it just, I think there's a gap in there or something. Or the fact that this wall is not a real wall. I was just getting too play, much play, so I made the whole system completely independent. So, uh, essentially, obviously, I guess I could turn the light off at the moment. We got the tops. Uh, these are just because I, I pretty much use I use a lot of recycled crap so it looks like crap right now once I uh, you know down the road I'm probably gonna take everything apart um, paint it and when I do that I'll paint it all to match and I'll probably take a grinder to my down rails and pretty them up and I was thinking you know just to get rid of the little bit of slop that's in here now I may uh, may run another brace from you know right in here um down to here or something uh i have to think about that one a little bit but so yeah essentially we got one two you know those two are there's two pieces there one on each side and i actually just clamped those together and ground them so they 
are somewhat symmetrical looking. Uh, three, four, five pieces. <coughs> and um, this also, not only being a counterbalance, this actually moved my mill two inches, my column two inches backwards. So it have it got my uh, my spindle a little bit more over my table, and I can actually when I bolt my vise down, I can bolt my vise in the center slot as opposed to up on the front edge, so I can get my vise more solid, on, more solid, yeah, solider, whatever. Like I said, it's late, so I can get my vise mounted on the table a lot better. And I'll actually give you guys a, I mean, anybody who's got one of these mills. Is, anybody I should say who's watching this video probably has one of these mills and uh, if you have uh, I think I just got the small three inch vise and you know damn well that you put it on the table and you can't bolt it you know even relatively forward you have to pretty much work off the edge of the vise you know normally I hate doing all this one handed so normally you have to bolt it right there especially when you use the, uh, the rotational base because this thing is you know right up against the column and I think even right here you know the clearance is just so minuscule and then on top of that you only get you know all the way back you get what like uh, an inch of the vise that you can use as opposed to, you know, if it was open all the way and you had a three inch piece in there, you can't mill that whole three inch piece without turning the vise sideways. And yeah, that's just a joke. So now I can put, you know, my vise all the way back there. Let me, uh, made a little speed handle too for the vise. And it, uh, I like it quite a bit. I got a, suppose I should have clamped all this well nah never mind so alright so let's say you got a workpiece in your vise that takes up yeah so then there's the other thing it makes it off-centered it takes up uh, you know the majority and I have to sit down again because I'm moving stuff and I need both hands I need to get one of those like head units or something. So yeah, with the with the vise clamped on the front slot, you know, you're only getting a part of the vise. So I guess I lied. You can come about two inches into it. But with how it's set up now, I can get all the way over the back side of the vise. So I can use the full potential of this vise by moving that column back two inches. Uh, I've seen quite a few guys on the internet that have done things like actually cut another table and bolted it onto the front, and just some some crazy stuff, man. They get some you know serious uh, serious movement out of it. Um, if anything, I'd like to get a little bit more table going to the. Uh, a little bit more x-axis as opposed to uh, y-axis but um, this is sufficient for my needs I do constantly find myself working on projects that seem to be uh, slightly above the capacity of my table and it uh, if anything it's made me a little bit better at uh, understanding this and what I'm doing so um, yeah so I'm moving my column back two inches uh, the other thing I did, I got standing in the light. Let's turn on this light, see if it helps any. Not really. The other thing I did is I got the uh, riser block from Little Machine Shop. So I'm two inches back, two inches up. Uh, what else did we do? Like I said, I scraped all the ways. It took me uh, about 10 days, and I didn't have a clue what the hell I was doing. But the mill's a little bit more forgiving than the lathe, and I have to do that next because, uh, I mean, let's face it, this is uh, Chinese equipment. It's not really a milling machine. It is a kit for a uh, milling machine, and it's not a lathe. It's a kit for a lathe. So, 
I actually rebuilt my vise too, took it apart, fouled all the berries off. Um, I'd suggest anybody doing that and this, uh, this actually runs, runs, operates quite a bit smoother than it did. So on top of that I just bolted my box on the rear. Uh, it's actually only on there with a single little bolt so if I have to pull this column and stuff off I can take all my electronics off and leave them right there on the table without having to unhook everything. I do have to unhook the, uh, the grounds back there. I, you know, with how it's done, I could have, and I may, um, just ground it to the bars or something. Um, as far as this rear goes, I just put a small screw in the top here. Um, because of how all this is set up, there's actually quite a bit of weight. And these are, uh, I say they're three quarter inch screws. And then it's just bolted on the outside on each side there just to uh, create a little bit of triangular stability. Um, this piece, you know, I was originally just going to drill this through and tap it right into here. But I uh, got a little carried away with an oversized drill bit. So I ended up milling a slot out and uh, taking a, a shoulder screw, shoulder nut, and... Uh, grinding two of the edges off so it's kind of like a t-nut in there so I can stick the nut in and the nut won't turn and then all I have to do is tighten down on that uh, this one just goes straight through to the rear so when I do just decide to take this apart and get that five thousandths out I really only have to deal with one side and the five thousandths I've actually I'm only like a thousandths and a half off in, in between my column my block and my base the all the the screw up is in this piece right here so I drilled a hole in the center of that. I uh, I put three holes in here just because I didn't know which one I was going to need when I decided to uh, change this around. Well, one was already there, so I put two more in there. I ended up using the center hole. Uh, that has uh, oil bottles in my way and crap everywhere. You guys know how it is. Uh, it has two more um, pulleys. And these are actually offset because that front one, the the uh, cable comes down and goes under the pulley and then it comes up and goes over the top pulley. And I had to do that because originally I had this set a lot further back to the wall. And I just had that cable dropping straight through to that pulley underneath. So when I put this base on, which solidifies it, <coughs> helps me solidify my column. Um, I had to add that piece because I had to move, wanted to move everything out from the wall a little bit. So this was actually just another piece of scrap I got, just stainless steel tubing. I bought a great big rack, I don't know, three, four hundred dollars worth of stainless steel on there for twenty bucks. I had a uh, no intended purpose for it when I bought it, but uh, can't really let it go to waste. So yeah, just <clears throat> this is my new Gibbs setup. This one actually. Maybe we'll be able to see this. I won't know until I uh, review this later. But if you can see that bolt head. So this bolt actually goes all the way through into the stainless steel. And then I threaded this plate. And then this bolt just rests onto the top of that plate. So I just did that because this is tubing. And I wanted a little bit more rigidity. So that plate kind of spreads out the weight. On top of that, it you know I can tighten that into the plate, and then this one's nice and tight, and this is my pretty much my lock for my Gibbs. Um, you know, as it is, the mills are uh, well, they say top heavy, but really it's front heavy. And when I put it together, I've actually got it so it was leaning back just a little bit, so I was actually able to just jack it up. It works the other way around. If it's leaning forward, I can use these to push it down to pull it down and then use that one to lock it so that's uh, essentially all there is you know this plate you know I fly cut it because this stuff is this uh, 836 channel is anything but flat this is a six by whatever it is six by two and a half six by three so yeah I fly cut it across there and then I actually just uh, cut out the corners down here to where it would sit flat on there and I was getting milled surface against milled surface as opposed to cast surface against mill surface. I did the same thing on this side. <coughs> Come on down under here. 
this is the rest of my counterbalance setup. So, uh, like I said, those two pulleys in the back that I had to add on, they now bring it straight down. And then it comes over. Um, yeah, I work for an internet, an internet installation company, so I get all kinds of stupid scraps. So I just uh, bolted that to my wall here. And then I got a stack of weights down there. And I have it, so all I have to do is pull out that screw I can add minus weight so if I do any modifications to the head which I'm planning and I'll probably add another five pounds to the head uh, then I can easily add weight <coughs> and so the only downfall is because I have this mounted so far back it doesn't really I mean ideally I'd want it mounted where the motors at and part of my plans are I'm going to swing this motor over this way and I'm going to put two plates in here so that way I can uh, align my column a lot better. It'll actually lift this up just a hair more and I'll have a nut under here and then probably one in the back here and it'll make it so I can take this whole piece off with two nuts and put shims under if need be, put it back on and it's actually I'm going to make it so it'll tilt probably 45 uh, each way and then that way I can also do the side to side alignment as well as uh, if I need to do any compound angles or anything I can use my my um, well technically it's a sign plate up here I got my sign bar but it's technically a hinged sign plate you know and I could set it up for angles as opposed to you know just using it as a uh, as a shim I can actually use that as a, a mounting surface and then I can mount it you know I can mount it on here as such and then I can tilt my head whichever way I need to go up to 45 degrees or if I for some reason need a 90 degree which I already have but you know I'd be able to tilt 45 here and put my you get the idea so that is another one um, I actually have six and a quarter inches of travel on my y-axis uh, it'll be a little bit more once I get rid of this washer I bought some thrush washers from VBX and I'm just gonna I'll probably just put this part on the lathe once I get done with the lathe mill it out fit the thrush washer in there uh, I have another thrush washer that I will probably mill out the other side of this and put it in there and I'll probably build a little cup to sit over it so it keeps all the crap off of it and then uh, yeah and that's pretty much it but right now I don't know if we can get to it to where you see it no it's all hidden right now I actually got a bronze bushing in there between the uh, wheel and the feed screw so it pushes the feed screw out so I'm only on here on this side about I'd say about three threads and that's another thing I did is uh, I went and got a coupling nut you only need one and you can do one for both sides you could probably use this as a power feed for a drill I don't know how tight it is but if you you can see the shims there so that's how much those screws usually stick out is where I had to shim this one up to get that nut on there so yeah nut and a couple of uh, grub screws or set screws and it's a hell of a lot better than them uh, nylon lock washers. You know, I can take this off, put it back on, take it off, put it back on. And uh, the, I don't have to worry about it ever getting damaged. Uh, another thing is with my little plate here, I have some rubber feet. So that'll help reduce vibration. I'm still bolted down. Yeah, need the flashlight again. I'm still bolted down to the table on just two bolts though in that little crossbar there you guys can see the, the nuts up on top and it's actually kind of nice because if I want to take my mill down or if I want to lube my screw or anything I can do it right here as opposed to having to unbolt the mill from the counter or anything like that and then of course my mills bolted to this so I got some uh, some shock absorbers um, obviously my power supply or my uh, control module there or whatever you want to call it has been 
moved out just uh, just a little bit. Nothing fancy. It's all kind of